In this video, I'm going to be fitting and trying out a 10 watt laser module that fits to your 3D printer. You might have seen this kind of thing before, but this one's different. Rather than being a bespoke unit that only fits one particular model, this one is designed to fit a whole range of 3D printers by eliminating the screen control board and wiring. This new kit from Creality was sent to me to try out, but as with all of my product reviews, I'm under zero obligation on content, and if it's rubbish, I'll tell you. Let's jump straight in to see how easy it is to fit and what it can do. And here it is. I'm gonna be fitting this to my Ender 3 version two, which is for all intents and purposes, completely standard. So what comes in the box? First thing you notice is we've got a manual. I'll find out how good that is. And then we have the laser module itself. This is a 10 watt laser module. We have a cover for the end of it. There's some safety goggles bag of random things and we have a power brick a usb-c cable a creality branded box containing a control board with room for a sd card power and the usb plug and a switch and a button and then we have a bracket this is the bracket that attaches the laser head to your 3D printer. So, first things first. The beauty of this kit is that you don't need to use your 3D printer's mainboard and screen. In fact, we're not even going to plug the 3D printer in. Everything is done through the new control board. All we have to do is plug the cables from the new control board into the X and Y stepper motors and limit switches. We have a few different plugs, some labeled Y, some labeled X, and then one labeled Z. Now you would think that that would go onto your Z axis, but it doesn't. This kit doesn't control the Z axis at all. You do that manually. What the Z is for is to plug into the module. So to start with, we're gonna unplug the X-axis stepper motor and limit switch. Now just move the, move the cables out of the way. Right, so then we find the wires with the X's on. What you also get here, because undoing and plugging in the plug, particularly for the limit switch on the X-axis is quite tricky. So once you've done it, you don't wanna be continually changing the plugs. So what Creality have done here is given us a little patch lead which means that this can stay plugged in and then the plug is outside. This is a bit fiddly, particularly if you have larger fingers, but I've managed to do that. Okay, X axis connected. And then we do the same on the Y axis, but instead here, we can't actually get straight onto the limit switch we can get to the stepper motor wiring, but the limit switch is tucked under a cover. So we just need to undo the cover and plug it in. Removing the, removing the Y axis stepper motor is really easy, but you can't get to the limit switch without undoing a screw just inside here. And then giving it a little wiggle and it comes out. Now inside here, you've got the limit switch connector, which you need to pull out. And then plug in our little patch lead, which has a Y on it. This is quite tricky. So again, you might need some tools or pliers. And then run the wiring out of the same hole and reattach it. Pop your screw back in. And then we can connect up our limit switch and our stepper motor. All that's left to do now is connect up our laser module and then we can plug it in. The laser module attaches using this bracket. So first we just need to fit this bracket. It's very simple. It just hooks on and then there's one single screw that tightens it up and holds it in place. You just have to move your x-axis gantry up high enough for it all to fit. Then very simply, just 
it just wiggles in and hooks on. Just nip it up with a supplied Allen key. And then we're ready to fit our laser module. Run the wiring for the laser module just with your standard wiring. And then plug it in. Slide it onto the bottom of the bracket. Last thing to do is just attach the protective eye cover, which is just held on by magnets. And that is it. That's the full installation. All we need to do now is plug it in, power it up and have some fun. As you can see, setup is really quick and easy. There's no need to mess around with firmware or do anything that changes your 3D printer. It's just as easy to remove and start printing again, but I'll show you that at the end of the video. As this laser attachment only plugs into a couple of stepper motors and limit switches, in theory, you could fit it to almost any 3D printer. Creality have provided a list for all of their models that it directly supports, but it will probably work on many more. You may just need a different bracket to fit to your machine. I'm also gonna fit this kit to a couple of other models later so you can see how versatile it is. It's pretty cost-effective too. This whole kit is less than half the price of an equivalent 10 watt laser engraver. So if you've already invested in a 3D printer, it's a great way to get more out of your machine. As with everything I'm asked to review, I ask for a discount for you, my viewers, which you can find down in the description along with product links. So now we have the hardware mounted, how do we use it? Well, a bit like 3D printing, you need software to convert any image into G-code, which the machine's brain can use to move the laser head around and turn the laser on and off. My choice of software is Lightburn, but there are others too. One of the main alternatives is Laser GRBL, which is free, unlike Lightburn. There's a copy of Lightburn on the supplied SD card, but without paying, you only get a 30 day trial. Once you have your software installed, it's time to set up a new machine and then set a couple of parameters. In Lightburn, click on Devices, Create Manually, GRBL, and then Next. Choose Serial slash USB as your connection method. And then after clicking Next, give your machine a name and set the X and Y dimensions in the boxes below. These are the dimensions of your bed on your 3D printer. Set your origin point to the front left, if that's the position where your bed and x-axis carriage hit its limit switches, and then click on next and finish. Before powering up your laser, I'd advise putting some sort of laser resistant material like aluminium or aluminum on top of your bed, or if you can, remove it completely. The laser will ruin some 3D printing surfaces, so take precautions. Also, I must just give a word on safety. The lasers used in these modules are dangerous. They can blind you in a moment of carelessness and also fire is an obvious risk when you're effectively burning your way through materials. Never leave a laser engraver running alone and never even turn it on without wearing your safety glasses and having the eye guard in place. This goes for any person or animal in direct line of sight with your laser engraver. So now we're all suitably terrified, it's time to plug in your USB and power leads and turn on your death machine. Seriously though, if you take proper precautions, there's no need to be scared. After turning it on, all I had to do was select the correct device from a drop-down list, as I have other laser engravers set up in Lightburn. As soon as I did this, the laser homed to the left front corner, ready for action. Before you can engrave anything, you'll need to set the laser height. This is very easily done with the supplied height gauge. There are two locking screws on the side of the laser module that allow you to slide it up and down on the bracket, but of course we could always adjust our Z height by turning our Z axis lead screw. I'm going to start with a simple engraving test just to check that everything's working properly. I won't go into how to use the software here, but if you do want to know how to import an image and set it up ready for engraving or cutting, then let me know in a comment below. In basic terms, all you need to do is tell the software how much power to give your laser and then how fast to move the head across the material. There are many other settings that you can change, but these two are the main ones. Creality have supplied a PDF on the SD card, which gives you all of these basic settings depending on which material you used. So I just plugged in what was advised and engraved this Monza track image. The machine did exactly what it was supposed to and gave a nice deep crisp engraving. You don't actually have to keep your computer plugged in via USB. Just like 3D printing, you can save G-code to an SD card and plug it in and keep your computer and laser engraver completely separate. You can only have one job saved at a time though, because there's no screen to choose between different files. I also wanted to try cutting materials, but didn't particularly want to cut directly over my 3D printing bed. So I placed a thin sheet of aluminium on top and then added this 3D printed mesh bed. This is very easy to print yourself and I'll put a link to the SDL in the description if you want it. You can also buy steel honeycomb mesh beds, which I'd advise if you plan on doing much cutting. The 3D printed one does work, but it gets a little bit damaged every time and will wear out. Cutting wood is very straightforward and easy too, but as you can see, it creates a lot of smoke. 
Unfortunately, this is one of the major downsides to using your 3D printer as a laser engraver. I have a workshop that I can leave when I'm done, but there's no way I would cut or engrave wood inside my house. If you're going to want to use one of these, then you're going to need a separate work area or possibly an enclosure like this one. Using something like this ender box, you could vent all of the smoke and fumes outside if you don't have a separate area to use. I experimented with all different materials and found that this 10 watt laser module will do everything that a normal 10 watt laser engraver will do. It cuts through wood and acrylic and obviously any softer materials and it will engrave on a huge number of different materials. I tried slate, glass and stainless steel. The only real difference to a dedicated laser engraver is the smaller cutting area because I've used an Ender 3. On larger machines you obviously get the benefit of a larger bed to use as your cutting area. I was able to quickly attach it to my Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro and my Sovel SV01 Pro, but attaching it to my Artillery Sidewinder X2, CR Tennis Pro and King Rune KP3S would all need custom brackets. The great thing about having a 3D printer though is that you can print whatever bracket you need. I'll probably design brackets for these other machines in time, so drop a comment down below if you'd like a bracket for one of these other machines. As I said earlier, converting a machine back to a 3D printer is actually even easier than attaching the kit in the first place. All you need to do is loosen the screw on the back of the bracket, detach the wiring and plug your stepper motors and limit switches back in. Within a couple of minutes you can be 3D printing again. I didn't even need to level my bed or set a Z offset as the laser engraving kit doesn't mess with any of it. Very clever. As always, let's look at a few pros and cons. If you already own a 3D printer then the biggest plus must be the cost saving. Laser engravers are expensive. $500 would get you a pretty decent 3D printer, but it's only going to get you a base level 10 watt laser engraver. This kit is way less than half that price and even cheaper if you use the discount code in the description below. My favourite feature of this laser engraving kit is the way that it can be added and removed really quickly without changing any parts, firmware or even settings. Just switch a couple of plugs, clip on the bracket and you're good to go. The 10 watt version is also pretty handy. I have a dedicated 10 watt laser engraver as well as a 20 watt version. A 10 watt laser is great for cutting wood and engraving on loads of different materials. My 20 watt model will do everything quicker, but laser engraving doesn't take that long when you compare it to 3D printing. When it comes to cons, I don't really have any. Yes, the smoke needs extraction and you have to be very careful to protect anyone in the area from harm, but that's the same with all laser engravers. I can't say I can really find any faults with this particular kit. It's well designed, simple to use and does everything it says it can. I don't know about you, but I think this little add-on kit for a 3D printer is genius. If you already have a 3D printer and want to try laser engraving, then this is a great way to get started for a lot less money than any other option. If you want to see one of my other laser engraver reviews, then click here, or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.